Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm supposed to take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving value's contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate it. they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, so I don't know how often we do podcasts on a Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now, right? Because we're in we're in Phoenix, Phoenix right now. Phoenix, yep. right. But we were, invited to, we were invited to uh, this event by this guy who uh, is a very special guy. He's got how many people? Make some noise, everybody. Make some noise. Uh, they're here. This they're is, here. I don't know, 13,000 people in the room. Insanity at Turning Point USA. We got Adam here. We got BizDoc Tom. We got Vinny and the great Charlie Kirk in the house. Give it up for Charlie, ladies and gentlemen. Sick event, Charlie. Thank you. Absolutely I, I got to awesome. tell you, one of the things I learned about you today, which I had no idea, I did not know your uh, grandmother voted Republican her entire life. And ever since she's died, <laughs> that's right. She's, she's a, a Democrat. voting Democrat. That's right. Ever since. Every year. Every year. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a joke, YouTube. That's yeah, a joke, everybody. I don't want people to uh, go. So, Charlie. How you feel right now I with the event you got? I, you know, we uh, first of all credit to the staff, uh, the Turning Point USA staff. They work their tail off. Uh, they work all year, first on campuses and in churches, and this is a culmination of all of it. It's a celebration of the grassroots army that we've built at Turning Point USA. But PBD, you host amazing events. Honored to speak at one a couple months ago. You know what it takes to put on events like this. Yeah. Uh, and to have to execute on a standard of excellence uh, like the Turning Point team does is not easy. And I'm so thankful for our team. Um, from the graphic design team to the social media team to people that have been here literally sleepless nights for a week to make sure that everyone here can have a um, life-changing experience. So I'm thrilled for our team. Um, glory be to God. Uh, he's blessed us amazingly here. It's the biggest event, uh, multi-day event in conservative history and also obviously the biggest event in Turning Point USA history. That's powerful to hear that. Seeing the energy. In the, by the way, if you're here, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, if you saw it online, it was absolutely electrifying. Uh, we want to get into some topics. We're doing podcasts Let's right now. We got it. some stories. Yep. Uh, one of the stories I think we can get into, we'll get into here in a minute, is what Kobe Covington said about LeBron James not standing up in the NBA game, the standing ovation. We'll talk about that. There was some extracurricular activity uh, by a Senate staffer. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Is that what you call it? Activities. Is that what you call it? Yeah, by a Senate staffer, right, yeah. alleged, allegedly, uh, by conservative outlets to have had sex in a hearing room. Hold on, read is, that. How sick is that headline, though? Senate staffer. This is by NBC News. Yeah. yeah. This. This Senate the, the word allegedly. Alleged. When it was on what? video. By conservative <laughs> outlets to have had sex. What does conservative outlets have to do with this? Yeah. We'll talk. All of a sudden, they're making it into a right wing thing. Of we'll course. talk about that. We'll talk about that to see what's going on. Zuckerberg is building a hundred million dollar house in Hawaii compound with massive underground bunker maybe he watched this movie leave the world behind and he's a little concerned or civil war who knows musk is starting a university i wonder how people feel about it we'll talk about that i think he's putting 100 million dollars into it ibm did you see the ibm video that was released by james o'keefe yes. by the way james o'keefe is here at america fest and we should have his back he's had a tough year and he just posted a big win but so that was a massive win we'll yeah, talk about still that as well. working for us mortgage payments on a new home have seen 90% rise under Biden's uh, uh, presidency. And then we got a couple other stories we'll get into. One of the ones I want to get into, which is kind of an interesting story. They ran numbers on the top 10 male models, mm -hmm. what they make in total versus top 10 female mo models. Again, top 10 male models, All right. Right? top 10 female models, what the 10 make against each other. And I think it's unfair. If you I, ask me, I, from your I face, I can unfair. tell. From your face, I can close. tell. When you look at the numbers, I, I think it's we terrible. need to do something about it. So. We need, we need congressional hearings. I yeah. agree. So, so <laughs> before we talk about that stuff, let's first go to our sponsor, Rob. If you want to play this clip, American Hartford Gold, and we'll get on to uh, all these stories. So look, I've been in the financial industry since 9-11, the day before 9-11, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have access to in case of many different things. That's why we chose to work with our new sponsor, American Hartford Gold. If you have retirement funds that you cannot afford to lose, American Hartford Gold will ship physical gold or silver directly to your door. Also, if you have retirement funds that you can't afford to lose, now is the time to call American Hartford Gold, a precious metal dealer you can trust. They have the finest products, amazing customer service, and a buyback commitment. 
They've earned a five-star rating from thousands of reviews and an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them I sent you and they'll send you up to $5,000 worth of free silver on your first order. So click on the link in the description or call 866-939-6984. Again, 866-939-6984. All right, are we back, Rob? Are yes, we good? Okay, so let's go into the story here. First one, IBM has a secret weapon that's bringing in billions, the Motley Fool. IBM's strategy involves selling clients on its platform, the open shift. Let me see if this is the story or not, Rob. That's not the one, Rob. The story about IBM is what uh, James O'Keefe no, did. No, it's because of this. Yeah. Oh, okay, let me go through this. Okay, IBM strategy involves selling clients on its platform like open shift, and Watson X, which generates a multiplier effect, CFO oh. Jim Cavanaugh revealed that every $1 of revenue spent on these platforms results in $3 and $5 additional spending on, spend, on software and between $6 and $8 additional on, on uh, services. Rob, I don't know if this story no, matches no, no, no. the it other actually one. Does, I can connect the two, though, PBD, because okay. it's let really me, it's super important. Okay, so then let me read the whole thing, and then I'll turn it yeah. over to you. IBM, while offering its own public cloud computing uh, platform, Partners with leading technology companies like AWS, Microsoft, and others. These partnerships have driven significant bookings for IBM, with Kavanaugh stating, our strategic partnership, we've got multi-billion dollar book of business with AWS, with Microsoft, and, SAP, and SAP, and next up are going to be Salesforce with Oracle and Adobe coming up. So tell us more about the okay, story. So, so that story didn't get a lot of headlines. about AI, it's developing. But what the other IBM story is, which is going viral, thanks to James O'Keefe, is this one where IBM was caught on camera, uh, their CEO saying give bonuses only to black employees and don't give them the white people, we should actively discriminate against white people. America First Legal has um, slammed IBM, they're potentially gonna sue over a Title VI complaint. So what do the two have to get together, right? Anti-white attitudes, IBM, and AI. Tell us. Well, AI, it's who, who's gonna write the ethics and the morals of the AI of tomorrow? So AI is going to become a woke super weapon. Oh shit. So think about it. Who's going to tell AI right from wrong? Well, the code of ethics that govern IBM is going to be infused into the operating protocol of AI. So that story doesn't seem like it's related. Okay, they have a press release, they're yep, making all this yep, money yep. in AI. So let's pretend you go into the AI that IBM is developing, a chat GPT chat type, GPT, yeah. type model, right? Yeah. You ask the question, can black people be racist? and the IBM AI would eventually say no. They would say, uh, what is racism? And they'd say racism is not individual prejudice, but a power struggle of what I'm getting at is that two seemingly disconnected stories here, IBM making a ton of money on AI and their woke culture, this is the danger, the, the clear and present danger of artificial intelligence is less about Terminator, that's a thing, but it's more about giving the woke mind virus a thermonuclear weapon to redesign society because at some point something has to tell the AI what is true and what is good and the IBM code of ethics, I kid you not, I have it in front of me and you guys can look it up. IBM has a like a 10 commandments, Elon Musk just responded to this, a 10 commandments, a, ten, a, a DEI 10 commandments, Ali ship commandments, this is IBM, openly acknowledge privilege and systemic racism exist and result in trauma. Two, never question the reality of our black friends and colleagues. Three, reject the idea that race is political. Accept that white people are responsible for dismantling racism. Five, understanding only white people are racist. Wait, this is, this this is, is an is official where? document of IBM. This IBM's document. Can you, Rob, can you pull this up so we yeah. can show yeah, this no, to the audience to if you our, have this document? Yeah, that's it right there. This is O'Keefe broke the story. Number six, knows the black community owes us nothing in this work. Seven require acknowledgement and repair of inevitable mistakes. Eight, is never rooted in white saviorism. Nine, sees the black community as a group of individuals and not as a monolith. Not, 10, does not seek recognition or praise for a job well done. So this is called allyship. So I want to just emphasize one of them, and I was just sprouting up to my head. No understanding that only white people are racist. That is the 10 commandments of IBM. So the 10 commandments of IBM are quietly going to be inputted into the AI of tomorrow. That's connecting those two stories, Patrick. AI is becoming a woke super this, weapon. This won't work, though, because th th this is, again, another one of those ideas that's just not going to work. Folks, if you're looking at this online, Rob, can you do me a favor? Play the first minute of O'Keefe's clip while the CEO of IBM is speaking. We just want to play the first clip. Arvind Krishna. Yeah, go ahead he's and play a, this he's clip. He's the CEO? He's the, the CEO. CEO. This Top is not right. some low person. It's okay, the this is the CEO yeah. of IBM. Go ahead. 
So we take underrepresented and gender. You got to move both forward by a percentage. That leads to a plus on your bonus. By the way, if you lose, you lose part of your bonus. I'm not trying to finesse this. So for blacks, we should try to get towards 13 point something percent. On Hispanics, you got to get into the mid-teens. So let me say it. Asians in the U.S. are not an underrepresented minority in a tech company. James O'Keefe here outside of IBM's corporate headquarters in Armonk, New York. An IBM insider has provided us with an internal video showing the CEO of IBM, Arbin Krishna, using coercion to fire people and take away their bonuses unless they discriminate in the hiring process. Let me go deeper in the red hat. Multiple leaders over the last year plus that were held accountable to the point that they're no longer here at Red Hat because they weren't willing to live up to the standards that we set in this space. This conversation takes place every single day and in a lot of it's behind the scenes they terminated executives that didn't discriminate yet another violation of title 7 one of the biggest companies in the world one of the most valuable and recognizable brands on earth IBM insider has provided us with an internal video showing the CEO of IBM Arbin Krishna using coercion to fire people you can pause it here you can pause it here so um, Dude. Okay, Tom, here's a question for you. I got, I got a question for you. you. You've been around the block, and a company, this is a Dow 30 company. They're worth top, $150 billion. They're not a small company. They're a $150 billion company. They may do something like this. Is this, this is as of when, Rob? Yeah, this is one day? $148 billion. I was right, yeah. One Can day. you do me a favor? Go to a five day. Go to five days to see what happens to their stock. Not a big movement. Go to one month to see what's happened. Really they're, not a big. They're movement. up over the last year, by the way. They're up forty percent over the last year. How how was uh, sustain? Five, go to five years. Yeah. Tom, how See? sustainable is this to have ideas like this within a company as big as IBM? Well, first of all, Charlie makes a good point. I'll connect back to do you and just just quick yes or no, and we'll nod here. Do you remember when Chat GPT first came out and kids were asking it like questions, and then people asked questions about faith, and suddenly it was clear that Chat GPT had a bias. Remember this? Yeah. We all discovered it, and it was it was almost uh, seen as you know. No big deal, nothing to see here. You're just using ChatGPT online to get something answered. Oh, wow, it's got a bias. Now you can see where the bias goes, how deep it goes. But let me tell you, take, you know, my first job out of college was with IBM. I went to IBM sales school, finished number one in my classes, you, you know. Yep. You know what, back then, that it, this didn't exist. There was a thing on the wall that simply said, respect for the individual. Whoever the individual wow. was, just respect for the individual. This is what year, Tom? What year is this? This is 1987. And right underneath it, it says our motto is simply think. And that's where that's it was. Right. And that wow. company has, has devolved into this. The CEO had it on this. his desk, just think. Think. And that's what it was. That's devolved. I don't think this is survivable long term. The company, IBM's not going away. But it's not survivable in its current state. It's going to change. It's going to be hit. Because you know what? If IBM has an office in Oklahoma, there's a certain governor that just signed an executive order that you can't do this mm -hmm. specifically. And there's a Supreme Court case this year that started with the um, Asian suing uh, Harvard, Yale, yeah. Yale, Yale, for oh, was it Yale? Yale yeah. for admission. They lost and they went to the Supreme Court and then we got the, uh, the anti-discrimination in admissions. It's all connected. IBM, this is going to cause cracks. Some people have they, they can't continue this. It's not sustainable in well, its current you know, you know how they say, you know, go woke, go broke. What's actually going to happen to IBM? What are the ramifications of something like this coming out, Charlie? Yeah, it's, it's not like Bud Light because there's not, IBM is not used by the everyday person. Right. right? IBM is a lot of um, tailored type of contracts. It's it literally called international business machines. That's what IBM stands for. And that Red Hat is their hiring agency. Red Hat is the tech sourcing firm for them. So what's going to happen, I don't know. But it should be a reminder that as we barrel towards this artificial intelligence, we have to figure out very simple answers to the question of what is true, what is good, what is right or wrong, by what is the code of ethics that we operate. And th this is something that you look at what IBM believes in. They believe their Ten Commandments are understand that only white people are racist, except that white people are responsible for dismantling racism, so on and so forth. And so artificial intelligence is going to be used as a way where an eight-year-old is going to type in very basic questions, and they are going to socially reprogram millions and tens of millions of people. And this is why Elon, I think, I think Elon, with his prophetic ability to see things before they happen, and immense amount of courage, I'm a huge Elon fan, I think Elon, what keeps Elon up at night, and the reason he's acting the way he is, is he's connecting dots. Woke mind virus, 
with AI. He has said this as much, where what is going, there will be a time where you ask AI something and it will give you an answer as if it's authoritatively true, even though it isn't. Uh, Charlie, can, can, I say, can I say one thing, Charlie? What? So we, we keep hearing all this type of stuff. You hear, see what IBM, you just see this anti-white rhetoric right. is happening. Charlie, there's, a, there's a war on white people. What, and here's my thing. What's the overall, like, what the hell are they trying to do? Like, what, what, what's going on? They're so, actively trying everywhere, all over yeah. Europe, everywhere. It's just an influx of it's everybody else and, and, and to hell with us and to hell with our country. So part of it is very masochistic. There are some people that just hate themselves, honestly, and they've been told to hate, hate themselves, filled with guilt. It, it's basically so much slow motion suicide. Mm -hmm. However, whiteness is a filler term to just say power structure, those people in power, right? So it is a Marxist framing of the world, oppressor oppressed, and they say white people are the majority, therefore they are in control. Um, and we must try and dismantle them. Look at the mayor of Boston. You're pulling it up right now. Yeah. Uh, Boston <laughs> Wu, uh, who has segregated Christmas parties where white people are not allowed. By the way, there are black-only dormitories at dozens of colleges, probably hundreds now, dozens that I know of, black-only dormitories. Um, and this is where it ends up. It ends into this really sick racial apartheid state where white people have less rights. I'll give you another example. When monoclonal antibodies were distributed in the city of New York, until they got caught, they were prioritizing people of color in the city of New York. Life-saving monoclonal antibodies were distributed and were prioritized to people of color, and white people had to wait. Now, they got caught. It's against the law, and, you know, they, ret they retreated. Go look up the new University of Michigan Hippocratic Oath, where the doctors and nurses of tomorrow, see, look at that, New York City will consider race when distributing life-saving COVID treatments. Yeah. So where are we heading? We are headed to an AI-based social credit system where if you are white, you have points docked against you. That if you're a person of color, you get special tokens. This is a reconfiguration of racial apartheid. It's the death of meritocracy, and it's a backdoor way to destroy Western civilization. Because Western civilization is against this crap. It's against the toxicity that race matters. One more thing on this topic. So a month ago, maybe even two weeks ago. They the, can hear us now. Hey Hi, guys. everybody. Hi, everybody. See, now we can get some spirit oh, going, yeah. right? Oh, okay. I'm glad we got that. Night and day. Yes, so, that's good. Shout out to James O'Keefe, because why is this so important? A month ago, not even less than a month ago, the biggest story in the news was what, what was going on with ChatGPT and Sam Altman, right? The hostile takeover of the he company. He was in, he was out. He was in, yeah. he was out. Now he's back in officially. But these types of conversations, especially around AI, need to be had now. Yes. The sooner the better, for the sake of humanity. Yes, and so the, yeah. what Elon wants is he says, why can't we have an AI that is not programmed political as if you're asking MSNBC the questions, or you're asking Nicole Hannah-Jones, you're asking Robin DiAngelo. That's a good goal, whether it's achievable or not. And so Patrick, that's a question. Is, and the question for you, because you alluded to this, we didn't really land the plane. Is this popular? Is this gonna continue? Here's the issue. The regular people here at America Fest, by the way, people of all different skin colors and backgrounds and diversity, they think this is terrible. The question, though, is that the elites, they're buying into this. The elites are bought into an anti-white, anti-Western, anti-Christian agenda. This is going to reach a boiling point because the, the grassroots, the people aren't putting up with it. This is a top-down revolution. I don't disagree. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's going to uh, work. I think it needs to piss off. Uh, the people who are wanting to fight for it and stand up, kind of like what Elon is doing. We talked about it earlier today, where there is three different ways to contribute. One is with your time, one is with your money, one is with your voice. If you have a platform, talk about it. If you got time, give your time to somebody. If you got the money, make the right investments into companies that want to do something about this, and that's what Elon Musk is doing. Elon just spent $100 million. I want you to think about this. He put $100 million into a new uni uh, university. Elon wants to open up a new university in Texas, this is according to the story, uh, The Verge. So Elon Musk plans to establish a university in Austin, Texas with a $100 million contribution from his charity, the foundation. Time is that? The university will focus on STEM education Nine. and offer instruction in subjects like math, science, engineering, and physics. It aims to provide hands-on learning experiences and simulations while seeking accreditation from Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commissions on Colleges in addition to the university, Musk's plan includes building STEM-focused primary and secondary school, schools that will teach subject beyond STEM. These K-12 through schools will initially enroll around 50 students with the intention of scaling up over time. This is an example of somebody that's making their money and using their money to fight the elites. When you see Elon doing something like this, Tom, for somebody whose daughter we cannot publicly say it, yes or no, 
We cannot say it or we can't say it? Don't say the school. Don't say the school. Okay. Tom's daughter had a school she wanted to go to. Yeah. I'll give you where it's at. It's in America, okay? <laughs> it narrows it down. We narrows it down. It down. So pretty good. Specific. It's not Oxford. No, it's, it's not, not Oxford. Oxford. She got a 1560 out of her uh, 1600. As a parent, Tom, when you hear somebody like Elon Musk, who's got a few hundred million dollars, he's putting a hundred million dollars into schools, what does that make you think about? Because if he's the pace setter, maybe other people are going to say, I want to start my, my own school as well. What does this make you think about? Well, this, this makes me think about, uh, and I, I've had this discussion with my daughter and my wife, and I said, I think you're the last generation that goes, at least from our family, into a traditional education institution as we know the structure today. I don't think my grandkids will do this. I think that you have people like Elon Musk, like you and me, that feel passionate about education, that are going to build a next generation and a next level of education in America. And what I think about, I really think this is the, the last generation, at least I'm going to be involved with, that, that goes to these traditional colleges in a traditional way. And, and by the way, it's really sketchy right now. You know, but she's got a very specific major. She wants to go follow that, but that's what I think about. I got a question And for I you. love what he's doing. I love what he's doing. I want to support him. Let's be creative. Let's be creative, and let's get some <laughs> ideas here. Okay. Let's just say we have an unlimited checkbook. We can use some of our resources to start a school. What would you build as a school to be unique and different than other schools out there? How would you build a school? What would you do in your school? This goes to everybody here. Tom, I, I'll start off with you. I, I'd go right back to the tradition of debate. Because debate has become, you know, just loud argument. There was a tradition of debate where you had a elegant way, and there was rules of debate to come bring in a point, have a counterpoint, a rebuttal, and then a review by your peers at the conclusion of that debate called the discussion of your, of your classmates or a discussion by a panel. I would bring back debate of both sides, bringing both sides in so people could see the logic and the true winner rather than being told who the winner is. Vinny, what would you I, do? I'm curious. I mean, I remember what, Pledge of Allegiance, they took, did they take that out of school too? Probably. Just something in the beginning where you, where you shout out your country and you, you basically get everybody on the same team. And they stopped doing all that. Charlie, you got a school, we're, whatever we want to call the school, we can call it. What would you have in your school that would be different than other schools? Yeah, first, I think Hillsdale does a great job. Uh, and I think Hillsdale's America's greatest college. And they're a sponsor here. And I, I love them. Hillsdale.edu. They're amazing. Actually, the website is charlieforhillsdale.com if you really want to check it out. But um, I would make it different. I, I, would, I would combine mind, body, soul. Um, if you, the theoretical school is you have to be physically fit. Uh, you have to have a certain BMI. You have to commit to a spiritual life. And you also have to develop your mind. And I would do it in a classical way. Uh, the whole center of higher education should be that there is a truth and let's figure out what that is the reason the woke stuff has started is they start from a tr truth claim saying there is no truth as soon as you acknowledge there's an objective of truth of the universe it destroys all woke i hope everyone understands that how do you beat the woke as soon as you get people to acknowledge that there are natural laws of the universe that transcend your existence and some things are objectively true it dis it absolutely obliter obliterates the woke so as higher education has dismissed that the woke has been ascendant. So that's what I would do. Adam, let's, by the way, how many guys want to hear what Adam has to say yeah. about the school? Anybody wants to hear Adam's thoughts here? <laughs> what would you do with your school? So I have a feeling yeah. what? if Adam started a school, 90-10 yeah. ratio, I believe. Yeah. 100%. Well, do you not, if, 100%. If you It'd be like a nightclub in Miami. 90% women, 10% yeah. guys. It's be the best college of all time. Right. And, and, but with that being said, number, rule, number one, rule number one, no dudes are allowed to play sports with the females. I like that. Straight up. I like that. Okay? Like, just not happening Very in my school. Very unique idea. This is Wait, like, man, that's... I understand so, so that. So, you're yeah. saying if Leah And Tom we will do strong. like we did back in the day in, in Little League, cup check. Let's see what's Got going you. on here. Got you. Number two, when we started the podcast in 2020, I think the number was like 11 to 1 liberal teachers. Yep. Versus conservative that's teachers. That's right. 11 to 1. Can we just get that back to an equilibrium situation where there's an equal amount, like you talked about, debate, conservatives, liberals, talk to each other, because what's going on with the smartest, useful idiots in the world at Harvard, MIT, yeah. Penn, we're seeing what's going on there. These the kids are geniuses, but they're being fed a ball of crap from these teachers, because how many kids in college are actually going to stand up and confront their teacher on maybe some ideology that they perceive as wrong? They're going to shut the F up, and follow along and then just go along that path. So I think it's problematic that there's so many teachers 
that are just basically indoctrinating kids. There's no more education, it's just indoctrination in school. Now back in Florida State, when I was there playing ball and having fun, we didn't really have to get into all this uh, woke situation. They go to class at Florida State? No, <laughs> but Charlie, that's how you end up on a yeah. podcast with PBD. And Pat, Pat, I think, especially in the younger age, like you know, what, what, what do cops walk around? That. What about Arizona State, guy? What are you talking about? I didn't go to college. He didn't even go to college, <laughs> yeah. We're here. Hey, so hey, go to college, it's Pat, a scam, everybody. Pat, college <laughs> is a scam. You the, should write the, a book The university about it. system is broken. Hey, the that college debt is ridiculous. That looks like a good book. It's called The College Scam. The College Scam. You did write a book about it. Pat, what do cops wear on their on their jacket? Cameras, the, the, the body cam, the body cam. Yeah. All the kids up to a certain age, like when they're young, I want body cam. All the they kids. have cell phones. That's no, 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 no. I want a cam. Yeah. Like you, you as a parent, to see what the hell they're teaching the, yeah. the kids. I totally agree. Have a have a camera go like a GoPro yes. on your kid. I want to hear if I want to tap in during the day and see what the hell you're teaching my kid. Here, I want to be able to come yeah, in and here, watch. Here's the best argument: you drop your dog off for doggy daycare, and you can log into an app to yeah, see yeah. if your golden retriever is being pampered. It's getting abused. When you drop your kid off to a public school, you have a moral right to find out what that Th teacher is teaching. That's Thank you. True. And Charlie, even is... if it's one camera in the classroom, if like you're a dad, you want to sign it for me? Yeah. Know, if you're true. a dad in your home, Adam, I want to be able to just go. Okay, what are they doing? If you go in there and everybody's wearing rainbow shit and dancing around. I'm coming to the school. You know what I mean, Tom? Claire. What the hell's going on? Maybe you want me to put the saddle. There you go. <laughs> Phoenix. Oh. Oh. Welcome to the West, people. Hey. Hey. Guys, that's a slow. That's the first yes. Middle Eastern cowboy yeah, see. ever. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. Hey, we put the college uh, scam written by Charlie Kirk here. You got your book autographed. So, PBD, I want to hear your answer to this question. How would you You're not transform the college out. system? Yeah. You no. sign it. Who's but your hair still is good. Oh, ask the question. No, yeah, because we've had this conversation before, but I think with Charlie here, and obviously in the light of this book, what would you do? Because you have four kids. Some may go to college. Some, some might go on a sports scholarship. You've thought about this. I'm going to do one thing that's going to be slightly different. Here's what I'm doing. If you go to my school, if your kids are going to my school, I need your involvement, the parents' involvement, period. Okay. If the parent is not involved, your kids can't go to my school that's because right. I'm going to need your help. If we're gonna spend time challenging your kids, pushing them, driving them, you have a certain responsibility every month for you to come to school. What do you mean the by kid, this? The parents need to the come to school? The parents are coming. Like Rodney Dangerfield and back to school? No, that's not what I'm talking oh, about. Okay. I'm talking about the, you're the, this coming to school. This is a model school. that works in the inner city the, on your, the charter schools. You're does. coming to school because we're going to also like, work on you becoming weekly, a better parent. Weekly meetings. Really? Because right. we're going to become collectively with the team. Yeah. So we'll update you. Hey, let me tell you what's going on. Here's what happened this week. This is what we're working on. These are the things that we want to talk about, what parents are working. Hey, Johnny, can you tell us what you're doing with your kids, that your two kids that go to our school, they have straight A's. What are you doing? Mary, can you share with us what you're doing with your kids that they've got straight A's as well? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, you guys do that? Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to use other parents that are raising their kids well to develop other parents that are also holding their kids accountable. Mm -hmm. This idea about let me send my kids somewhere, you do your thing with the kids, it's parents' responsibility. So we would put a bit of the onus also on the parents. The focus will be leadership development the way he had it. I love the idea, but... Uh, can, I, can I add one more thing that I think is, it would be right up your alley? What's that? I think kids need to understand that their major yeah. has an ROI attached to it. And I think they need to eliminate whatever majors have no... Like, kids are going into 50, 100,000, a quarter Gender million studies. dollars Gender of studies. debt before they're even made a dollar in their life. And it turns out that basket weaving or underwater sewing yeah, but I'm gonna tell you does something. not make money. You know, it's crazy, though. Here's, here's one thing we're not even thinking about. Like, look at all the industries that are about, that have disrupted in the past before, okay? Look what this is, okay? No, I, I never went to Columbia University to be a, you know, podcast or a journalist. We're here doing a podcast. People watch this. Millions of people give yep. their opinions, thoughts. Do you know some of these guys that are used to reading a teleprompter right there? Yes, next today at <laughs> 8 o'clock, John Judge from the, and you're just kind of reading it. Yeah. The disruption did this to mainstream media, yep. newspapers, internet, Twitter, social. I believe the next 10, 20, 30 years, one of the, se se one of the industries that's going to be disrupted in ways we don't even know ourselves is going to be education, and it's going to be so painful. By the way, we saw what happened with MIT. We saw what happened so, with Penn. So we saw what happened with uh, Harvard. Uh, Harvard. So they didn't uh, fire the uh, president. They can't. Gay, right? They can't fire We're her. not going to be doing that. They yeah. redefined plagiarism yesterday in their bylaws. 
By the way, you know what I love? I love that they did that. You know why? <laughs> if you're a parent and you're still thinking Harvard's the pinnacle of school to go to, you are a fool. This is yep. not the same Harvard of 20, 30, 40 years ago. They're being exposed. That's the beautiful thing about what's going on there. Now, gentlemen, I have something I want to share with you guys. I don't want you to be offended or upset, but I think it's not fair. And in about two minutes, I think you're going to be very upset with this one area. If I were to ask you right now, the top 10 male models in America, how much they make versus the top 10 female models? A year? A year, total. What's the ratio? Let me ask you one more time. Mm -hmm. Top 10 male models, good looking men, right? Versus top 10 female models. What do you think the disparity is? This is a travesty. 10 to 1? I'd say it's 75 to 1. 75 to 1. Rob, can you please play this clip? I wish you guys could see it, but you, you'll be able to hear it. Rob, go ahead and play this clip for us, please. Go Ten ahead. top earning male models earned a combined total of eight million from September 2012 to September 2013. A fraction compared to the 83 million their female counterparts raked in over the past year. Sean O'Pry is currently the world's highest guy. paid male supermodel, earning 1.5 million last year. The gap, by the way, this is 10 years ago. It's there for a reason and it's been there. I don't think it can be closed. Females, for example, have a lot of platforms that they can use to jump off of, like Victoria's Secret contracts, cosmetic contracts. Males don't have that. Rob, but O'Pry isn't here. complaining. Top 10, 8 million versus women, 83 million 10 years ago. Do you think, folks, do you think it's fair? that women, top 10 women models make 10 times the amount of money top 10 men make. Is that yes. fair, yes or no? Yes. Do you think it's fair? Yes. How is that fair? That's Why so is sexist. it fair? So sexist. Are you not offended by this video? I don't like it. The market decides. Men, men, men are visual. That's, yes. that's, one of the, that's one of the main reasons I left the industry. I was like, <laughs> I'm not doing I'm this shit anymore. By the way, uh, shout out to Vinny's abs these are. days. Yeah. Wait a minute, Vinny, so, Vinny. Just become trans and go get the paycheck. Oh, That's shit. That money. Vinny Mulvaney, ladies and gentlemen. If there's anybody that knows about that, it's you. Will you sponsor my boobs? I'll I get would. a really nice, I'll get a rack. $10,000 okay. So Wait, wait, wait. I, I thought a rack was a country. No, no not a rack. Not a rack. Anyway. So, you know, you know what is funny, though? As much else. as we're having fun with this and yeah. we're joking around, this is when somebody sits there and says, well, look, who wants to go watch male models the way they want to watch female models? You know, back in the days, there was... Mr. Universe, who follows bodybuilding? Anybody knows Mr. Olympia? No? Okay. Back that in the days, does. used to be something called Mr. Universe. And there was something called Miss Universe. Guess what no longer exists? Mr. Universe. Guess what still exists today? Miss, Miss Universe. Universe. Yeah. Unfortunately, Miss Universe is being ran by a man today. Trans woman. I don't know if you guys have seen that video or not. Women. Trans women. Trans women. By women. That's right. But is it still run? He's still... He, she, Whatever. Uh, he, he's is about he to go bankrupt. He bought it for $20 million. He's going bankrupt. They don't know what they're going to be doing I with it. I wonder why. This is another example Should've where got the NBA instead of boobs. when you show the numbers, somebody can look at it and say, give me a flipping break. It's the market capitalism. Whatever's yep. getting more eyeballs, let them play ball. Adam. Well, look, this might be a little controversial, but this goes down to basically what Charlie always talks about, traditional gender rules. It's no secret that women through all of history have been beauty objects. And men have been success objects. I live in Miami. Believe me, I see fat, sloppy dudes worth a billion dollars hanging out with supermodels. How did that thing work out? If you want to take, if you want to look a deeper thing in the numbers, because Natalia and I covered this, look at the disparity in the NBA versus the WNBA. Talking about know, putting butts in I, seats, I I the top that. NBA guy makes fifty I million dollars a year. Okay, the top WNBA player gets a pack of Twizzlers and says, go make a layup, baby. <laughs> I think she makes maybe a hundred grand. So it's the same, if you want to use sports success as an analogy and a metaphor to what's going on in modeling, men in the NBA are making 10, 50 million dollars a year. Five million dollars is the mid-level exception. If you're average, five million bucks. In modeling, I think Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, Gigi Hadid, these people are making 20, 40, 50 million dollars a year where Hot Bill over here makes a cool mill, and that's all he's going to get. What's wrong with Hot Bill? There's nothing wrong with Hot Bill. Good looking guy. For me. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. All right, let's go to the next story. This is the Senate story. So, oh, Senate staffer, if you guys are okay with this, Charlie, I'm coming to you is first. Is anybody ready for this? Hot dudes. Oh, yeah, it's a subject matter I'm really uh, familiar yeah. with. Yeah. 
This is insane. It's, uh, I, 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 I'm, 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 the, I'm, I'm the subject matter expert. <laughs> Senate staffer alleged by conservative outlets to No, no, no. You got to dwell on the headline. Yeah. You have well, to. Listen, I'm Senate. reading what NBC, if they no. say it, it's correct, right? If oh, they right, say it, you got to believe them. No, I know, but the fact that what the heck does a conservative outlet have to do no. with this? Charlie, I know you're dying to give us your feedback on this. I let know, me I'm first sorry. read the no, story. Right, right. Let me read you're it. Right. You're right. Charlie's Senate fired folks. up. Folks, uh, Senate staffer alleged by conservative outlets to have had sex in a hearing room is no longer employed. NBC News. So Aiden, a Senate staffer accused by conservative outlets on engaging in sexual activity in a Senate hearing room, has been confirmed as no longer employed by the U.S. Senate. According to a statement by, you know, his office, the allegations stem from a video published by the Daily Caller claiming to show a congressional staffer involved in sexual activity within a Senate hearing room. Now, listen. I don't know if we want to show this clip or not, but I've... <laughs> yes. Rob, Rob has been showing it to me all day. Yeah. Listen, I'm we're like, all grown-ups here. We're going to show you the I clip, and you're going to like it. If, if you haven't seen it, we're not going to show it to don't you. Show. I'm sure you've seen it. Here's a question I got for you. When you see something like this, okay, and by the way, did you see his response, what he I said? Ha I have the whole Can you read his response? So the, by the way, most millennial response. Listen to millennial his response. So, so mind you. It's our fault he had gay sex in yeah, the Senate well, hearing. It's, and it's homophobic. How dare you and make you will me be, do this? And yeah. you will be held accountable by a court of law by the way, for judging yeah, and, me. And by the way, can we at least what? show an image? We don't need to see the video. No, 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 no. So uh, this oh, has been a difficult time for me. As I, hold on, I'm going to read it like him. As I've been attacked <laughs> for who I love to pursue this political agenda. While some of my actions in the past have shown poor judgment, I love my job and would never disrespect my workplace. Any attempts to characterize my actions otherwise are fabricated. All right, and I will see by exploring what legal options are available to me in these matters. Wait, wait, fabrication? No, no, it's, no, it's, it's called, it's called fornication. fornication, Tom. That's what it is. Charlie, but Tom, Charlie balls, thoughts on this, Charlie? Yeah. Man, this is Sodom. I mean, pure and simple, this is Sodom and Gomorrah stuff. I mean... We will be judged. I mean, the, the desecration, the depravity of what was once sacred. But honestly, this is a pattern. The what is holy, and in Hebrew, holy means separate, elevated, is being desecrated on a daily basis. Joe Biden had uh, alleged, not alleged, but not, this like transgender stripper goes topless on the White House lawn. Alleged by a conservative outlet. No, no, no yeah. me, the meaning alleged being, I don't use the word transgender. I think it's all fake. But... Um, the, the, the uh, right there, right, the Joe Biden stripper on the White House lawn, they had... They, that was Trans Day, right? Or yeah. Pride Day? They had the pride flag Stop center right. stage. Right. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney is given special access into the White House. Cocaine is being done in the West Wing. It shouldn't surprise us that Senate staffers are not just having gay sex in the Senate hearing room, they are filming it. They're filming it. And then he has the... Gall. <laughs> yeah, or some anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault, Patrick. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? you? You made me do this. Look what you made me do. <laughs> yeah. Look what you made me do. I'm you made me have live... By the way, let me just be... Hold on one second. This, yeah. is, this is a pattern I'm seeing from the media. The very similar... Look at the political story, by the way, of the Virginia House candidate. It came out recently. Virginia House candidate, sex tape. Um, this whole profile piece in Politico. Yep, that's right here. Uh, and I know it should be more recent. Yeah, this is it. Her online sex life was exposed. She lost her election. Now she's speaking out. Nowhere do they mention. She live streamed it. She live streamed what? her sex life. They didn't find it on some sort of internet thing. Yeah. She, Rob, get the link. She posted. No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop it. This is a family. By the way, can, can somebody help this, find this Vinny and Adam a wife, please? <laughs> this is America I'm Fest, good. family friendly, wholesome. Got it. Think homeschool. Okay? Got it. That's America Fest. This, we're out of Miami. Okay? Got it. What's wrong with Miami, Charlie? No, there's plenty wrong okay. with Miami. <laughs> anyway, the point is this is a pattern, okay? The degeneracy, the depravity. Let me ask you a question, I, I, Charlie. How, yeah. how, does the enemy, how does the enemy process this? So let, let's just say Xi, China, Iran, Russia looks at well, us. That's a really good question. What do question. you think they say? What does no, the this enemy is, see? So I, we know it. I mean, if you read Putin's speeches, again, I'm not like a big Putin fan, but you should know he uses it as an internal rallying cry yes. to consolidate power. And this is something that we need to talk. I said this all along, that the subtext shower. of the Ukraine war is like gay agenda versus yes, traditionalism. Yeah. Again, well, if you read the actual Russian Federation speeches, Putin says no, they're transing their kids and they're chemically castrated. Again, I'm not a fan of Russia. It's not a free society. It's not an ideal society. 
but it's true that the trans thing is pushed by NATO, it's pushed by our intel agencies, the pride flag is pr shown prominently by our government. And if you look, if you actually read deeper, the spokesperson for Zelensky was a trans person for the last two years. So in some ways, Russia uses this as an excuse to say, hey, people of Russia, I guarantee you, and by the way, they're gonna show this like nonstop. If you rush, watch RT, which I don't, if you watch any of these Russian television stuff, I guarantee you they're gonna say, see, look at the Americans. This is why mm -hmm. we have to reject the West. You have to understand oh, the, the narrative going on in the East is that America is the leader of modernity, and modernity gets you the following. Gets you live stream gay sex in your capital. It gets you lots of suicide. It gets you a lot of depravity. It gets you lower birth rates. It gets you pornography. It gets you transgending of kids. Some of that is true. Some of it's an exaggeration. But what do our enemies, the, the easy answer is that they're laughing at us. No, 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 no. You just gave Vladimir Putin a gift where he is now going to give a speech and say, by the way, the people financing this war against you, where you people of Russia, where they took the vote, at night, they are live streaming gay sex. That's what this war is all about. Yeah. It is the internal rallying cry of the Kremlin. And by, and by the way, it's such an easy argument to make, to make fun of the enemies. Like, yeah. look at these clowns over there in America. Easy. There was one say, well, no, great. It, it's not a mockery, though. They use it as fear. The people of Russia, actually, they don't laugh at it. They're like, mm. yes, Putin, stay in power, mm. because we don't want that here. And so it, it laughter, yes, but it's more like they use it as this is coming. When they hear Lady Graham, Lindsey Graham say, we're going to come Graham. after, you know, this is a war of offense. What they, Lindsey Graham, A.B. Klobuchar, Ukraine, war of offense a couple years ago. Um, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Patrick, but what I'm getting at is the mockery by some, but the rank and file people of the mainland of Russia are terrified that the overtly aggressive gay agenda is going to come into Russia. And this certainly helps the argument. Look right there. The Saren Ashton Cirillo is a person born a man who became a, became a woman, who thinks are a woman, yeah. who is the spokesperson of the Ukrainian armed forces. The true conflict unfolding in Ukraine is the trans agenda, the excesses of modernity, and traditionalism. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm on the side of Putin. That doesn't mean I'm on the side of the Russian Federation. But you have to understand, that is what is rallying Russians domestically. I fully agree with you, Charlie, because two things can be true at once. Number one, Putin is a thug and dictator and obviously an enemy of the United States. But we're embarrassing ourselves when we are endorsing and co-signing the LGBTQIA+, whatever parts of the alphabet you want to throw in there. So... Yes, he's wrong. Yes, he's a bad guy. But yes, he has a point. He does have a point. Like, I mean, are we allowed to have a thought crime that, like, Putin has a point? Are you allowed to say that? No, you can't. He's the worst person ever. That doesn't mean we're endorsing no. okay, Putin. Here's a fact. Russia has said it's illegal to have transgender surgeries for kids. Good for Russia. Good. Yeah. Honestly, that's a good thing. Good. People say, no, everything Russia does is bad. Like, that, what a stupid way to look at the world. Yeah. Like, no, it's good. And by the way, there's some things Russia that doesn't do. Do, so I got in this debate, and they say, well, Russia puts their political opponents in jail. Yeah, you're right. We would, we would never put our political dissidents in jail. <laughs> yeah, we, we would never have that. gulags or have Donald Trump face 700 years in federal prison or lock up people because of thought crimes or making memes. You're right. Mm -hmm. Russia is so bad that we would never put political dissidents in federal prison. Or kick down their doors. Well, or kick warrant. down their doors <laughs> or have a dragnet because someone took a selfie in the Capitol. Maybe we're actually more like Russia than Russia is. Well, you interviewed one of the most famous Russian athletes ever, the UFC fighter, fighter um, Norgomenov. What's it, what does he go by? Khabib. 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 And you asked him how many genders are in Russia. He probably and he, like laughed. He thought about it for like literally a half a second. What did he say? I, I asked him, I said, in America, we're very competitive. We have like 100 different <laughs> genders. How many yeah. genders you guys got in Russia? And he said, we only have two. It's kind of disappointing at yeah, first. Yeah. You're like, I thought Russia would be more competitive. Yeah. But they have something it's, called it's sad. common sense, yeah. and they believe in science, the real science, not the kind of science and, that we're being By the way, I just want to say today. one last thing. I think it's sick and disgusting that these guys did this in the Senate hearing room. Because that, everybody what should knows. What should happen to Everybody knows that's well, what goes down in the House. What, what should happen Well, he's to he got fired, but... I don't think the, the, the senator that he works for, I mean, he's saying he's Senator Ben Cardin. Yeah, so ben Cardin. He he is a, but Personal but matter, he should let's be not criminally charged for defecating the holiness and the yeah. sacred tradition yeah. of our hey. legislative body. Yeah, and Tom, he should be put in federal prison for having gay sex right. and filming it. Yeah, because exactly. January, January 6th was an insurrection. What was this, Tom? 
sort of an ass erection. And that's what. Oh, but, but, no, but if, and, and, and no, it's just. By the okay. way, so Can did I, you know this too, Charlie? He actually did another photo. This came out today on Laura Loomer's uh, on her page. He's taking a photo at work like this from behind with the mirror saying, I'm waiting in my office for Lindsey Graham to show up. He posted that. Somebody searched in his, like, went back. He yeah. was posting all that stuff at work back in the and day. And guess what, Vinny? What? Lindsey Graham showed he up. He probably did. That's for sure. By the way, Charlie, got to ask you this. Disgusting, horrible, what have you. What happens if it wasn't gay sex? If it's it was just... An, of course it's still an appropriate. Would it still be a federal uh, yeah, crime? Yeah, of course. It's, okay. des it's desecrating. Of course it is. Absolutely. But here's what bothers so many people about the point of it, is that he, he probably thought he could get away with it because... Like, the whole gay agenda gets special rights right now in this <laughs> sick world, okay? Yeah. So let's be honest. Like, the, and, and then he plays victim, like, oh, I feel so sad for him. Like, wow. Like, that is weaponized narcissism. All right, so let me ask you this. No. Let, let's do this. Let's say— But, but let, yes, to answer your question, would yeah. be wrong. Let's say a Trump was president today and that happened. Well, he doesn't control Congress, but yeah. But what, what do you think, what would you think his first reaction would be if that were to happen? What would he say? What would I mean? I, I would live for that tweet. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't even want—I mean, I would just— it would be it would be yeah. it would be Michelangelo material. It would be something that we remember yeah. and, 600 and, years from now, and we display in the streets of Florence, yeah. and we say, "You remember when Donald Trump reacted to the gay sex film?" In Senate? It would be a wing I, I, I don't of the even, Smithsonian, I, but just exactly. Tweets. I don't even want to guess. I don't yeah. even want to guess and, what it would be. And mind be. you, guys, he, he would tweet something like, Her, "Here, things are happening in the Senate yeah. right now." He would do something like that. Sick, and mind you guys, he, pa yo, you, he, was pat sex. Pat, he was just fired. Doing it again. He was fired. He hasn't been charged or he anything. Should be. For, he, he should be. be. He will. No, no, no. He's a Democrat, Adam. He'll be fine. Trust me. He got fired because they have to fire Let's him. Let's see what happens. What he won't he get did trouble. is worse than what 99% of the people on January 6th. 1,000 percent. What he did is worse than what 99% of the people did on January 6th. By the way, that's not even that big of a shocking statement. It's well, not. I'm going to get clipped. That's why I repeated it. Yeah. The degenerates at media matters that probably enjoyed the video yeah <laughs> let's let's talk about let's transition, transition. into the next topic nice i use thought transition word, was the right yeah. appropriate word to use here yeah. mortgage payments on new homes have risen 90 percent under biden's presidency 90 percent in three years average monthly mortgage payments on new homes have surged by 90 percent since the start reaching 33 22 in the third quarter of this year Driven by interest rates exceeding 7% on rising housing prices, the Federal Reserve aggressively, aggressive strategy to raise the rates has caused it to be where it's at right now. Tom, 90%. So if somebody was paying 1600 bucks a month, 1700 bucks a month, now they're paying $3,300 a month. How, how, how do, the average, and then they say the economy is doing better, gas prices are doing better, all these things are doing better. How does the average middle income family afford raising mortgage rates by 90 percent well first of all the government likes to tell a um, one truth and one lie the that is inflation is down the economy is fine no it's not the truth is inflation is coming down the lie is it's not good in the economy because all prices haven't come down houses have gone up in value so, and new houses that have been built so you have construction in cities building new homes out there people are trying to get out there so the, the house is a little bit more expensive and then the interest rates are more expensive because the fed raised interest rates very aggressively over the course of a year to tame inflation you raise the interest rates and inflation eventually comes down um, i won't go deeper into that but what has happened is now people go out to buy a new home a starter home or something and the interest rate has effectively doubled the payment in some places with a national average of 90 percent so it's like this is bidenomics but all the all the government will say hey interest rate excuse me inflation is down the economy is fine no it's not fine this is a net new change and people now can't afford a home tom the stock market the other day when jerome powell got up market rallied up five six hundred points in a single day what did jerome powell say on that day that got the market to respond the way that it did I think inflation is reacting to the interest rates going up, so I think over the course of the next year, interest rates can gently come down. But they're not going to go back down to where they were. They're just going to, today, mortgages are like seven and a half, depending on what you want to look at. And by the end of the year, next year, all things held constant, although we have a giant election in the middle of this, they think that interest rates will be down at five and three quarters, six percent or something. So the market was like, woohoo, it's going to cost us a little bit less for companies to borrow money over the course of next year and interest rates are not going to go up any further. So I called the market to get happy because they're thinking about big companies 
borrowing money to buy new factories, machines for the factories, and it's going to cost a little less because the interest rates will be down a little bit predictably over next year. But it doesn't mean a lot for the consumer because they're not coming back down to some bottoming out that's going to take mortgage payments back to where they were two years ago. So I've been following this story very closely because I'm constantly having conversations, whether it's better to buy, whether it's better to rent. And you know who's done the best job of basically highlighting what's going on in America right now? Wall Street Journal. If you pull up Wall Street Journal, you'll see the headlines saying things like, there's never been a worse time to buy. Okay? And also headlines like, the math just does not add up to <laughs> buying a home right now. Could it be any clearer? Uh, 47 of the top 50 metros in America. There's never been a worse time to buy instead of Show the chart Boom. below, by the way. There's yeah, show a chart that chart. Below. If you can find that. In 47 of the top. It to your 47 of the top 50 metros in America, it is significantly $1,000 or more cheaper to rent. You're talking LA, Phoenix, Miami, DC, New Boston, New York, name a city. There's three metro areas where it is actually financially better, cheaper to buy. What are those three things? Pittsburgh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Damn right. And then I think um, Jacksonville, Florida, I want to say. But the, the reality is, if at this point in your life, if you're looking to rent or buy and you're not a person that sort of has those 3% mortgages been grandfathered in, it's not even a debate at this point. The math is not on your side. Couple that with the fact that mortgage rates are at what, seven, seven and a quarter now. I think it went to 6.95 this week. The math is not there to buy whatsoever. Well, Pat, is it ever, is it gonna, I mean, he's saying it might go down if everything stays the same in a year, but Tom, it'll never ever go back to what we were used to? I, I think what it would take to go back to what we were used to is not something, is something we've experienced once before, which is a cataclysmic event in the economy that no one wants to see. What you also have to remember here, is for so long, and I think this is something I've been saying over and over again uh, on the podcast and other places, it has been beaten into people's head that being a renter or renting is somehow a dirty word. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It can be a, per it's a personal financial choice where you can actually conserve your resources, be more flexible of where jobs might be or not be, and be able to move, and versus, and then taking savings out that might be earning some interest and permanently mm -hmm. embedding them in your house that might not go up in value. And also, you know, the difference there is just the payment. Once that the value of the house has gone up, mm -hmm. as if you're gonna own that house, if the hail damages the roof, you know, that's yours to repair. Well, yeah. let me add one more thing. There's the mathematical side of things and there's the emotional side of things. So we've all been told forever and ever that the American dream is to basically own a piece of America, own a home, right? 94% of Americans believe, 94% of Americans believe that owning a home is a fixture in the American dream, but yet less than half believe they'll ever be able to afford a home. So what's happening to the American dream? People say the American dream is dead, the American dream is dead. The American dream, especially for young people, everyone that listens to Turning Point USA with Charlie here, all the college students out here, the American dream is not dead, it has just changed. It's all about mobility, it's about, all about flexibility, and it's all about low overhead. So what does that mean? When you, build, when, you, when you buy a house, what's the goal, right? To build equity in your house. So if you're just renting, and you, can't, and you don't have a mortgage, you don't have a house, and you can't build equity, where can you build equity? Well, your investment portfolio, your digital wallet, hell, even your savings account. Build that bad boy up, and when the market turns in two, five, 10 years, Boom, you're cash rich, you can buy something at that point. And maybe you have a few extra dollars to support your church, private school, or turning point, things that are doing good stuff in America. Great plug, Tom. I love Charlie, the sound of that. You're hired, Tom. Yeah. That's it. Tom's Tom is hired Tom. officially Tom. campaigner thank, thank for you. Uh, I, all right, I, let's actually, go to I the mean next. That with all my heart, actually. Let's go, let's go to the next story here. Rob, do you want to pull up the picture with uh, the second greatest basketball player of all time, LeBron James? Can you just pull up this picture Wait. real quick? Uh, I just have to put that up there. So that's LeBron. They're singing a national anthem. You see everybody with their hands on their chest, except for the guy with the pink sweater, which is kind of weird. But he's sitting down, LeBron, and he walks up, doesn't stand up at all, doesn't stand up for the national anthem, sits down, doesn't get up, nothing. Kobe has something to say about it. Rob, do you have the Kobe Covington clip? And I don't know if you've seen this or not. Rob, can we even play this he's, or not? He's well, fighting but, tonight. But, PBD, I, uh, I, I disagree. No, Kobe's the second greatest basketball player. LeBron, you put Kobe ahead of LeBron? Oh, LeBron's a brat. 
He's you, awful. You put Kobe ahead of LeBron. Absolutely. As a, okay, but well, that's a different debate. I'm actually very impressed. I by love you that. that. I'm, I'm I very love impressed that. by that. Not but, even close. But I want you to play this clip. And, and f folks, I, I, if you hear what he has to say, I, I'm, I'm curious to get your reaction. Go ahead, Rob. Can we hear it, Rob? If you no? hate America so much and, and you go don't like this country, bit, they go gave you a... Go back a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Play again. Can you turn my mic on? If you hate America so much and, and you don't like this country that gave you a billion dollars, leave it. Or come deal with me. You go to China. Go to go to these sweatshops that you employ all these laborers and use these women and pay them pennies on the dollar to make your millions. Fuck you, Luke Drum James. You're a coward. You're a spineless coward. And you're a bitch. By the way, I don't know if he said LeBron James or oh, LeBron James, hey, but I think the, it was trying to say LeBron James. The fact that he James. didn't say it right even yeah, makes me like him more. That's the best part. Here's, that's the best part. Even if you give him respect you. enough to say his name. Yeah, here's a question for you. Here, let, let, here's a question for you. Say the average person's watching and saying, listen, man, you got 200 other stories to pick from. You're choosing this. Why is it such a big deal to stand up for, you know, the, the, you know, the ovation that they're doing? Why, why should he stand up for it? Why is it so important for it's national a, anthem? It's a huge story. Why is that? It's a huge story because it's a micro of the macro. The macro is we have the richest people that have benefited so great from this country that are filled with ingratitude. And they've become bitter brats. Now, is it, is it like civilizational altering that he didn't stand or not? But no, it's a picture. It shows you how the people that are worth a billion dollars that have been given so much. This country has treated LeBron James so well. This country has blessed him beyond his imagination. And he can't even stand. Because, and by the way, it's not something like I didn't hear it or not. No, because he has bitterness in his being. Like LeBron James has never stopped being this like resentful, driven, like America's systemically racist. I think he, we obviously know that LeBron James has some like inner demons he has to work out, right? Yeah. But contrast that with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, which again, Michael Jordan, better basketball player, Kobe Bryant, better basketball player, but also better people. I mean, Mike, Michael Jordan would never do this. Are you kidding me? Michael Jordan loves his country. Michael Jordan bashes mm. victim mentality. And LeBron James is going to get away with it because there's this slobbering media that supports whatever LeBron James does. And LeBron James is more loyal to the Chinese Communist Party. If Xi Jinping walked in a room, he would say, sir, yes, sir. That's his true master. And so it is a picture of exactly what the average elite in America feels, which is, why should I stand for this? There's nothing great about this country. And part of why we have this event, America Fest, is that the everyday person, the plumber, the electrician, the welder, the parent, the student, we are done with the most powerful people using their power on a downward campaign to destroy our country. Like, leave the country, LeBron. Like, leave the country. You have a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't need you. Like, the country has not been enriched by your dribbling around and shooting. You're not allowed to say that because it's racist. I don't care. That's what you do, okay? You have a talent for basketball. You're a bad person. We don't need you. In fact, the country would probably be better if you went to mainland China. Like, you, I can't think of your school is not even functioning in Cleveland. Like, kids are killing the other kids. Mm. You know, he's like, he's, he's not even a good philanthropist. And so, look, I, I get pretty fired up about this because we used to be a nation 100 years ago. You could say what you want about Carnegie and Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan and Mellon, who made billions of dollars, the robber barons, right? Say what you want about them, but they loved the country. They loved America. Mm -hmm. Rockefeller loved America. J.P. Morgan loved America. Now the people that have it best, absent Elon Musk, he is the exception. Praise God for him. Mackenzie Bezos, LeBron James, Lorene Powell Jobs, Reed Hoffman, Mark Benioff, Reed Hastings. They don't love the country that gave them so much. And we are here at America Fest that say, go to hell. Go to hell. We're taking back this country. Yeah, great point, Charlie. Adam. Yeah, I, I mean, this isn't, I don't know what LeBron's going to do, but this is an inflection point in his career and his life. If LeBron actually loved America and he actually paid attention to what people are saying about him, this would be a great time for him to say, look, I'm LeBron James. I love the hell out of America. This made me the billionaire. This made me the man I am. Imagine LeBron giving a speech like that. Like Jordan famously said, I don't pick uh, sides, Democrats, Republicans. Why? Because Republicans buy tennis shoes too. But LeBron has an opportunity here to be like, you know what? F all of you. I love America. Yes. But I don't see that speech coming. Of course That's no. the problem. And then I'll add one more thing. And shout out to you guys here. And this is the problem that I have with my Democrat buddies out there. It's become abundantly clear that Republicans and conservatives 
love America more than liberals. And certainly more than progressives. And, and that's who actually basically a, hate America. That's a bad thing, man. Yeah. America Fest should be people of all political affiliations. If we had this event 50 years ago, we would have Kennedy Democrats and Rockefeller Republicans. It's not good that America Fest is partisan. It's 100%. It's true, it's real, but like loving the country is considered radical and hating the country is considered fashionable. Yeah. You get extra tokens and points in Aspen elite society if you hate America. You get your like, weird looks if you say this country's amazing. Are you saying you're not going to Aspen for Christmas? Oh, no, I'm not. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm invited to a lot of Aspen parties at New Year's on Red Mountain, these Patrick. People, these people that go to Aspen, you got to be careful no, with By them. the way, it's, all, it's all these top out. Kennedy, it, Bunkport, Martha's Vineyard, Aspen, Sun Valley. I've been to all your vacations. It's not yeah. that nice. Guys, don't what? follow my Instagram stories during Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you are one of the elites, PB. But you, yeah. made, but you made a good point, Charlie. And it's like he's obviously the, the China situation. We see with other athletes, too. Who was the... Who was the WWE guy that John Cena John, John Cena, Cena stuck up for Spoke Taiwan in Mandarin. he had to speak in Mandarin to the camera and apologize yeah. to the to his to his masters and you nailed it and it's just I'm sick and tired of this anti like by the way he joined the NBA when he was in high school LeBron what what struggle what what, what have we done so wrong to and I think when Trump God willing Trump wins that attitude of people saying like a uh, Bette Midler or Barbara Streisand or Cher if Trump wins I'm leaving this country. We have to put in law that if you said that, get the f out when, you, when it happens. You gotta leave. You said it, your word is binding. Yeah. Bye. By the way, I wanna contrast that with something though, that the attitude here, if the bad guys win, we're not going anywhere. Nope. That's what makes us yeah. different, is that I'm gonna raise my grandkids here. Yeah, it might get like to be a, a dystopian hellscape. I'm not leaving. You can't force me out. I'm never gonna give up. I'm gonna be an annoying mosquito in your ear for as long as I have breath. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna leave. Yes. That's Charlie's Wolf of Wall Street speech. Right I there. love it. I'm Which I you. love. But I, 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 I'm, the, what's going on with Gen Z, when he, we see them sort of parading for Hamas, there's something there. And, and, and at the tip of the spear, it's like hatred and disdain for the country that you live in and that you're born in. And you're looking around the world and being like, oh, they're all doing it so much better. Show me a perfect country. And you know what? Move to a more perfect country if that's where you're at. But you, today you brought up a stat in your awesome speech, sick speech. Thank Give you. it up for Charlie's speech today, by the way. Sick speech. So sick. Yeah, 2032. 2032. 2032, 2032. 2032. Remember that number. I approve Lay go. Lego. Lego. But you said about high school, high school students, Charlie, yes. are tending to be more conservative yeah. now because they're probably seeing what's going on. In That's right. colleges high and beyond. High school boys. High school Explain boys. that. Yeah, that. so it's the Hill.com uh, conservative poll. High school boys most conservative in 50 years. I, I think you can pull it up. But but high school boys conservative Gen Z. The headline isn't as good actually as the data. Yeah, uh, high school boys are the most conservative they've been in 50 years. Uh, yeah. Young ladies are pretty liberal. That's it. Yeah, high school boys are trending conservative. I think there's a really great poll that accompanies this. Uh, they did a couple stories at the Hill.com. Um, but yeah, look, the, the, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, so that's 12th grade girls, and then you go down to high oh school God. boys. Oh, uh, Yeah, the girls are, are that's not good. So, um, and then the boys, you got to really scroll. You know, they bury the lead here, Patrick. Uh, they don't even have it for the, the boys. Um, or they got rid of it. The, the boys are the most conservative they've been in 50 years, and for a lot of reasons. Look, young men are first and foremost. PBD, I got to, this is it. Look, 50 years. Most conservative in 50 years. You go back to 1975, they haven't been that conservative. Wow. PBD, you deserve a lot of credit. A lot of young men look up to you, PBD. A lot of young men look up to you. And you're a great role model for them. You're a great father. You're a great husband. You're a great entrepreneur. But you're part of a community of really outspoken men. The Tate brothers, which, you know, aren't people aren't you know, all fans of them, but they've done a lot of good calling out a lot of nonsense. Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh. You know, you kind of list them across the board. 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old young boys are gravitating towards this genre of content. Unapologetic alpha male, uh, high T, right? Loving the country, free speech. It's okay if you disagree. Let's get into the arena of different ideas. And it is freaking out the left. And because this, this, they're getting their news from social media, over-the-top podcasting, that yeah. sort of stuff. And you see it happening, PBD. Th this is one of the great signs of hope. At Turning Point USA, we see it every single day. Young boys are going to shock the world. I'm telling you, they're going to shock the world this coming November. I'm Charlie, telling you, they're going to shock the world. Charlie, actually, so I want to make sense of these numbers because there, there's actually a story that just came out in the New York Post that actually is very worrisome. Okay. Okay, because it it's basically tells this story. And you talked about 
have kids, get married, do it yeah. as young as freaking possible. The fertility so if you look crisis? at that story, yeah. no, 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 not the fertility. Go back to those numbers real quick, Rob. So just break this down for me. Young men are getting more conservative and young women are getting more, more liberal. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So here's the story that it, the New York Post talks about red flags in dating. Okay. Oh yeah. Here's the number. The most common red flag for men, um, two thirds agreeing to this, were women who had communist and socialist ideology. So they're basically like, yo, I ain't fucking with these communists. That, that the, should be the number one great. dating criteria, by the way. Sure. Never date a commie. Yeah. Fully agree. <laughs> Never date right. one. But how about this? For women, 75% would not date a MAGA Republican. So here's what's going on here. The men are getting more conservative. The women are getting more liberal. How the hell are they ever going to get together, Charlie, and make those babies? You now would make sense yes. why you're not married yet. Oh my God, I got it. And it Closet also explains the Republican. So God, it, it explains why so many women are becoming lesbians. I'm not kidding. It <laughs> explains why. No, I mean obviously because they want what they want, which is they want liberalism. So they go after what is liberal, which is single women. Yeah. And they, they're like, oh, I don't want a MAGA Republican. Yeah. Okay, let me get this straight. So you don't want a man that's going to treat you well and protect you and provide for the family and is going to nurture and raise good kids and mm -hmm. love the country and, you know, live the American dream? Like, what exactly do you want? Right. And the reason is because they've been propagandized by the media, by academia, by their friends, by the music that they consume, that there's something toxically masculine. And I don't believe them, actually. Mm -hmm. Deep down, even the most liberal, neurotic woman, she dreams of a strong, muscular, high-T man yeah. in her life. The problem is, here's what it is. The root of modern liberalism and Tucker says this all the time, is, is these are young girls with daddy issues. It's what it is, right? Mad at dad. My dad watches too much Fox News. Like, okay, get over yourself. Honestly, mad at dad is the driver of, like, the broken politics that we see right now. So how does this reconcile itself? Well, honestly, you know, at America Fest, I could tell you, the young women here, they want MAGA Republicans. I mm -hmm. could tell you, they want MAGA Republicans. And, and honestly- And, and they don't uh, have small hands either, Charlie. No, eventually, we all know that. eventually, we're just gonna outbreed these people. Yeah. We are. I mean, we're just gonna out, we're gonna have more babies. And 20 years from now, they're gonna say, why is the country so right wing? Well, you were too busy having mm -hmm. abortions and having gay sex and not wanting to get married. And we got married and had kids and we will repopulate the species. Yeah. By the way, by, I'm by, not kidding, by, by, by the way. By the way, by the way, by the way, you, you can be left, right, center, logical, emotional. That is by far the most logical argument you just gave oh, statistically that cannot be argued because it's proven. Thank it's you. going to happen, period. It's that, just going to take right. two decades. It's, it's going to take two give decades. Give us some time, everybody. That's Buy right. us some time. Buy the yeah. Constitution some time. You know, America Fest, by the way, if you look at the young people here, yeah. check back 20 years from now, it'll be the population of Wyoming. Right? I mean, Mormon levels of but children we, will we come have, out of America. That's the key, best. though. We got to have Mormon level of kids. Well, yes, we got to get our testosterone rates high. Young ladies got to get married, and we have to have the babies. And by the way, I mean, the, 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 the Bet David family, you guys are doing your part. But no, all joking aside, having children is not a left wing value. It's not important to them. It's just the data. Like, I'm not even reading into so it. So maybe, know? maybe if that's what you're saying, maybe. Let them keep talking about abortion and let them keep doing this well, look, kind no, of well, stuff because I, I, they're just going to get yeah, Is that yes kind of what no. you're saying? Well, yes and no. The point is this. Abortion is a moral crime on the country, right? I don't wish that upon anyone. But the, the, the truth of the matter is this, is that if left-wing people keep on not having kids, whether it be by abortion or, you know, being in homosexual relationships, how exactly do they think this thing is going to work? I mean, this is why, honestly, they want to import so many people from the third world into this country, which is backfiring, because they have to have some way to try to stop all these right-wingers from having babies. I got two stories I want to do before we wrap up. We got two more stories before we wrap up. How many guys here are familiar with CRISPR, Cas9? Who's familiar yeah, with I, CRISPR? I it's gene-altering gene technology, Gene-altering right? technology, yeah, it's yes. a little creepy. So, uh, Vinny, are you following this story closely? No, Brandon, no? Brandon hooked me up okay, with so the story. Okay, so check this out. Imagine if in 2012 this lady from UC Berkeley comes up with this concept called uh, uh, CRISPR uh, Cas9. Okay, CRISPR Cas9. 2013, CRISPR gets started, this company. 2016, they go public. Their stock goes all the way up to nearly $200. Today, it's like a $4.5 billion company. When was the date that they just got there? On December 8th, uh, FDA approved the first CRISPR treatment sickle cell disease. What this gene editing does, you can literally, imagine going to the doctor, you and your wife, and you say, Doc, Doc asks you a question, Vinny, how tall would you guys like your son to be? 6'4", um, okay, yeah. great, boom. 
Uh, what color eyes would you want your son to have? Blue. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, what color hair would you want your son to have? Blonde. Great. You literally order what you want your kid to have, and they put those genes by editing it for you to have exactly the baby you want to have. Now, you may say, Pat, there's no way that's possible. How long ago was it where people started deciding, how many people would say, you know what, I don't want to have three different pregnancies. Doc, can we do one pregnancy, three kids? If you had money, you would go in and say what? Let's have triplets. How long has that been going on, Tom? 20 years with the um, uh, in vitro fertilization. But, but watch this, and guys. And they can plant multiple. 20 years is not a long time. You're manipulating having more kids. So these guys sat there and said, if we can manipulate that, what if we can manipulate the exact type of a kid you can have? Now, here's the thing. They tested on a couple hundred people. They tested lymphoma. So this gene editing can actually do some good which is cancer, cure AIDS, cure a lot of different things. But when you think about gene editing, Charlie, what's the first thing you think about with this invention of CRISPR-Cas9? I mean, I think of eugenics first and foremost. Um, and I mean, I, first of all, I don't trust the technology. And then who's gonna be in charge of it? Look, the only possible hope is that potentially there are some people that are born with some really, really unfortunate stuff, okay? Really unfortunate stuff. That if we could find some way to limit that or eliminate it, praise God. What I mean, I mean, um, someone who's born with MLS, right? Lou Gehrig's disease, right? That, that, if there's a way to get rid of it. But look, um, this, is, this is going in a direction that I think is very dangerous, almost end time stuff for those of us that follow the Bible, where this is not about correcting, this is about designing. This is about taking a role of God and trying mm -hmm. to design the human being you want. I'm sorry, I'm not on board for it, right? Absent an intervention that could save somebody's life from a life-threatening illness. For example, if there are two parents that both carry um, a recessive gene and they know for certain that a child has a one in four chance of having a debilitating life-threatening disease. Okay, I think there could be a moral argument for that. But saying that I want to customize my child like I'm going to you know, build a teddy bear workshop, I think that's really sick. Tom. I really do. Tom. Or a nefarious country just deciding they want to build um, a super race, superhuman. Well, that's we're, what we're we're worse than that. Rob, they can you give him that link about China that they're building Captain Americas in China as of 2020 right. when we found that's out? That's the scary part. Yeah, they don't story, want women. Please. They just want. I need five. Okay, in 18 years from now, I need to have 5,000 super soldiers, just males. Order them up. By, by the way, this is it. China has done human testing yeah, to create the, this biologically is clo this is Clone Wars, Star enhanced. Wars stuff. Super soldiers, says top official U.S. intelligence agency, did immediately respond to requests for comment about whether China seeks super soldiers for like those in such films as Captain America. They now have gene editing to build Captain America type soldiers in China. Uh, Adam, for you, thoughts on this here? Well, never underestimate people's ability to just have their own self interests basically endorsed. So people are going to do what the hell ever they want to do. A couple things. If our enemy is doing it and making a super race of humans, well, we're going to kind of have to meet them at their own game here or we're going to get blown out of the water. I totally agree with Charlie where, like, every year I go to the Special Olympics. My father had cerebral palsy. Yeah. It was a family thing. We would go there. He had mentally, he was 100%. He was good. He was sharp. He did math like PBD. Physically, he'd almost like he had a stroke. But I would go to the Special Olympics every year and it was the most rewarding, empathetic, yeah. like reality check where like I'm a 15 year old kid with pimples. They're like, yeah, you don't have it that fucking bad, buddy. These people have it bad. Mm -hmm. If you can change those people's lives, yeah. people with cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy, people with major issues, people with all sorts of just autoimmune issues, auto yeah. everything. Yeah. If you can change that, you're changing people's yeah, lives. I, I, would be, I, I would be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Patrick, I'm going to be very skeptical about both the ethics and the execution of this technology. But if it can, you know, help people from life-threatening diseases. You know, you know what it is when you think about gene editing? There's a handful of movies you think about. You got Elysium, you got X-Men, you got uh, uh, Fly, you got uh, oh, Jurassic man. Park. That's all gene editing, oh, right? Wow. So in the hands of the wrong person, they're capable of doing a lot of bad. Last but not least story before we wrap up, Tom. Uh, DEI, it's not looking good for DEI. A bunch of people on, the, uh, uh, on Twitter are talking about DEI. Elon Musk talked about it. Oklahoma governor signs order 
effectively banning diversity programs as public colleges, at public colleges, okay? Finally, somebody's stepping up. Yes, yeah, let me right. read this story I to you. I got the biggest applause from the crowd. Let's yeah, go. Interesting. Oklahoma Let's Governor go Kevin Stitt signed an executive order effectively banning diversity, yeah. equity, and inclusion, DEI programs at public colleges and agencies, prohibiting them from state funds or resources for DEI initiatives and ordering the dismal of non-critical personnel. This order is effective immediately with compliance expected by May 31st of 2024. Charlie, what do you think about the story? I think it's amazing. Uh, I think every red state governor should follow suit. Uh, anybody in power should get rid of DEI immediately. Uh, DEI is a Marxist program that's infiltrated. It is anti-white institutionalized. Um, and Elon Musk is one, now one of the most anti-DEI spokespeople of the West. And praise God for Elon of doing that. He says DEI should be uh, rearranged to DIE uh, because it is saying it is mm. dying. Look, Elon Musk calls diversity, equity, inclusion morally wrong. Propaganda words for racism, sexism. Changing the target class doesn't make it right. Good for you, Elon Musk. We need more people with wealth and with power and a platform to speak out against uh, DEI. So I love that Governor Stitt is doing this. It shouldn't have taken this long. Um, they call you a racist. <laughs> Ignore them when they say that. Get rid of the DEI office. Go back to meritocracy. DEI is at odds with the promise of the American Constitution. It's at odds. You cannot have a meritocracy and have DEI. So choose. Choose which way, America. Do you want a segregated society? Do you want Christmas parties like in Boston where white people are not allowed? That is DEI. Do you want black-only dormitories? That is DEI. Do you want bonuses based on skin color? That is DEI. Or do you want work ethic and merit to be rewarded? That is what built this country. We have to get back to it. So right now, we have to go on a non-stop deletion campaign and get rid of every single DEI office in America immediately. Charlie, can I ask you a follow-up on that? Great point. So, you know, they say there's a difference between perception and reality. For the people that aren't really following what's going on with DEI or ESG, everything that's sort yep. of you know in, in, in our world, for the average person when they hear diversity, it's like, all right, cool, diversity, that's great. Yeah. Equity, yeah, we all want a piece of equity. Oh, it's great. Well, it's a different, inclusion, you know, exactly. Inclusion, inclusion. Yeah. let's be included. I want to be included. So on the surface, like, you know, if you're a liberal college girl, like whatever, like most people aren't paying attention to policies. They're, ta they're, they're paying attention to personality and just basically optics, where did people, like, get, give people the, 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 the reality of what this is, meaning the average person out there thinks it's great. Charlie, how racist of you to basically say DEI is bad. Yeah. What would you say to those people? Well, I mean, first of all, understand what DEI actually is. It's Marxism by another name. It is race Marxism. It is trying to destroy what exists, strip it down, and put in a completely different type of society. It, it is race prefer you know, it's, it's race preference. And so you have to ask somebody, yeah. Do you think your skin color matters to your worth? It's one of the most important, simple, honest questions in America today. Mm -hmm. If yes, you're a bigot. I have, no, I have no time for you. You should be like, no, actually, your skin color doesn't matter that much. Of course, there's racial differences. They don't matter, actually, really at all. Mm -hmm. They don't matter about your character or your soul or your agency. Like, and by the way, how, how shallow? I mean, people are much deeper than how they look, like a lot deeper. And just to kind of put people back into sectarian yeah. tribes is regression. Yeah. So what DEI well, does... Yeah. It is retribalizing society into a new India-style caste system mm. where you can never escape. No matter how much good you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how early you work, no matter how much you try to improve your life, you're trapped. You're in an open-air prison. DEI creates America into an open-air prison that if you're white, you can never escape it. You have to constantly apologize. You have to constantly go on a knee. And it's like, by the way, if you want to live in that type of country, go to South Africa, literally. That whole country is built on DEI and CRT. It's an entire country that is based on racial separation and revenge against whites. They have political rallies where they say, kill the boar, kill the boar. The whole country is built on racial resentment. Mm -hmm. what, the, the revival that will come to this country, and PBD, you're doing a great job helping lead, and what we're doing here at America Fest and Turning Point USA, the revival will go back to a preference on meritocracy. Character, not skin color. Agency, not tribe. That has always been what has made America different and exceptional. Yeah. Well said, Charlie. How much similarity, like when you hear BLM, Black Lives Matter, on the surface, it's like, yeah, of course they matter. But the reality is, was a Marxist organization that was basically trying to tear it, down it the nuclear is, family. Of course it is. Is that basically the parallel to yeah, DEI? And, and again, don't take my word for it. Look at Elon Musk. DEI must die. The point was to end discrimination, not replace it with a death rate. Discrimination, that's the world's wealthiest man. He's saying it because it's true. It's not like he has more. He has to go make more money or he's mm -hmm. going to win favor or friends. 
And look, they, they took advantage of the best intentions yeah, of the American people. To your point, yeah, inclusion. Who, do, who wants to be yeah, non-inclusive? Yeah, right? Or yeah. diversity. Now, they never actually mean diversity because they want everyone to look different but think the same. They don't mean it. Yeah. They don't believe in intellectual diversity or viewpoint diversity or religious diversity. They want just skin color diversity. Bingo. And they want ideological totalitarianism. Yeah. That's the most important thing. So, look, DEI is against... It, it, it is... I, DEI is a virus. And I'll say this, and people hate when I say it, but it's true. DEI is a much more dangerous virus to America than COVID ever was. Damn. And DEI is now lo lasting much longer than COVID. Mm -hmm. And the top priority of this conference and our podcast and all of us together is to unite our forces. If you're a libertarian, conservative, Democrat, I don't care. We must unite and kick the DEI virus out of America as quickly as so, possible. So it died. And it took a South African... Made American Great. Elon Musk Great. to understand how it works there to basically call this out. Tom, no, amen to that. And you, you were asking, uh, Adam, you know, where do people see it? Well, people are seeing it when teachers, public school teachers, have to take a vow, and it's a vow, or they have to sign a document that adjusts their behavior at school. So people are seeing it come out saying, "Wait a minute, why do I have to do this? I'm a 25-year teacher. Why do I have to take this vow against this and this and that?" It's showing up everywhere. Critical race theory. One of the first tenets is, is that the instant you're born, if you're born white or Asian, you, critical race theory, are inherently racist. And you haven't lived a moment of your life and had a rational thought. You're, 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 you just arrived here. You know, welcome to Earth, enjoy your stay. And so when you take a look at these tenets, they're absolutely ludicrous. And you, you can boil it down like this. Your dad goes into an emergency room. I don't care what color the doctor is. How many bypasses has he done and can he save my dad's life? That's the only thing I care about. Mm -hmm. That's a meritocracy. And that's where it needs to go. And Charlie, God bless you for everything that Turning Point is trying to do to raise the awareness and be such a loud voice. Thank you. And exactly what Elon Musk says. Let's not take one discrimination, which is bad, and, and just replace it with another discrimination, which is far worse. Yeah, I love that. You know, it's, it's amazing. I never... The, the idea of somebody feeling sorry for you should be an unattractive idea. Pity. Like, you shouldn't like yeah. pity. Again, this, such a good th point. Th this goes back to this book that was written many years ago. Rob, if you can pull up the chart, Power Versus Force, just go to Power Versus Force chart. Uh, this is something everybody ought to look at. You ought to go through this. Click on the, the, one with the, the one to the right of it. Go to one right there. Click on that one. Zoom in. Just zoom in. Don't do anything but click and just zoom in a little bit. There you go. And go left. Look at this. From the lowest level of consciousness to the highest one. Zoom out a little bit. The lowest level where you don't perform in a good place is shame, then guilt, then apathy, then grief, then fear, then desire, then anger, then pride. The first level where you finally have power is when you have courage. Then neutrality, which you're able to entertain opposing ideas. Then you're willing to have the discussion. Then you're accepting the differences. You're able to reason with other people. You love, joy, peace, and if you make it to enlightenment. If you can constantly be aware of this, to not fall for the shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, and pride, and have the courage to change, future looks bright. And it looks like you guys are doing that with Turning Point USA. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Of course, absolutely. I just want to give a shout out to our amazing attendees here at AmFest. You guys are the best. You guys are unbelievable. <laughs> Praise God. You guys are doing such a great job. And just a, a thing, uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, YouTube is playing a lot of games with our Charlie Kirk channel. If you guys could go subscribe and like a couple videos, it will break us out. They're really... Rob, they're, put the link below yeah, in the that chat. Would, that would help us. It would bless us at home. It, if you guys just go to the Charlie Kirk channel, they're shadow banning our videos right now. It's totally clear. We were averaging 5 million real views, you know, short videos a day, went down to 5,000, like nothing. Like 10, what? Like, it's unbelievable. It's obvious shadow ban, got a strike over something wrong. The way to break out of it, though, is if this people go organically to the page and it spikes the content back up. So if you guys could do that, it would we would deeply, deeply. The moment Charlie you get off, ladies. just go subscribe, comment, thank you. watch thank a you, couple Patrick. of the posts. Thank you. Charlie, again, thank you for the invite. Had a great time with the audience here. Thank you, everybody. Take care. We'll do it again next week. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. That flew by. That was awesome. This was awesome. Pat, uh, and PVD, you're staying, uh, staying around for tomorrow, right? I am. I am. Is, is, is Guys, tomorrow happening or no? You don't know yet? With you and me? No, no, of course. Tomorrow you and I are in the morning. Yes. What do you mean? <laughs>